Codependents are so afraid to have people get angry at them. It's terrifying. So codependents are generally afraid of making other people angry. They're afraid of asking people for what they want because they don't think that their wants are valid. It's scary to tell people what you want because your whole life you've been taught that what you want is irrelevant. You don't have a right to want what you want when you're a codependent. And it's scary. So codependents have a lot of anxiety, a lot of resentment. They're afraid to go after their dreams because they've been disconnected from their dreams. And they live in a state of survival. They're always afraid of the shoe dropping, but they don't know why they're so afraid all the time. And I would say, when you're codependent, you live with angst and you're constantly trying to be good enough. There's always a sense that I'm not good enough. And like I'm, I'm running this marathon and I'm, and I'm trying to prove myself. There's something that I'm trying to do. There's someone that I'm trying to prove. I don't know who this person is that gets to come and say, you're good enough, but I'm going to find him. I'm going to keep being good enough. Maybe it's the mailman. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's the deli guy. Maybe it's my kid's first grade teacher. I don't know. But there must be somebody out there that's going to make me feel like I'm good enough. So when you're codependent, you feel like you're not good enough and you're looking constantly looking for opportunities to be good enough. That's what it feels like to be. It's crazy making. It's crazy making. Do you feel invisible? Do you worry more about what other people think than what you think? Do you worry more about what other people think about you than what you think, than what you think about yourself? Do you struggle with a sense of self? Do you feel like a shell? Do you tend to attract alcoholics or addicts or narcissists in your life? Do you struggle with feeling seen? Do you doubt that you're worthy of love? Do you wonder if you're worthy of abundance? When you're out and about, do you feel like all eyes are on you and everyone thinks you're less than? Do you think that other people, for whatever reason, are better than you? Do you think that other people are more deserving than you are? Have you been raised by people who are alcoholics? Or maybe were you raised in a home where there was no alcohol, but did the people in your life act like alcoholics? Were you raised in a dry home? That's what we call it. Were you raised with people who had mental illness? Did you go to sleep afraid? Did you wonder whether or not you were good enough for your mother and father's love? If you do, dear one, there's a very good chance that you've grown up feeling disconnected from the self, feeling invisible to the self. You might not even have a self, although you do, you're just not connected to the self. And if that's the case, you may be struggling with codependency. You may have been taught that your happiness is somewhere outside of you. You may think that happiness is something that someone else has to give you. You may think that your worth is not a given and that your worth is something that someone, that someone has to give you. You don't know why you feel this way. You may attract the worst partners in the world and you might be the nicest person in the world. You might be a people pleaser. You might be an enabler. You might be the friend that everybody goes to to have them figure out their problems, but you can't figure out your own. If any of this sounds familiar, you're not alone. That's exactly how I felt. And I grew up in what's called a dry home. So I understand your journey. And if this is your journey, if this is what you're struggling with, there's a very good chance that the program that I've created will be able to help you connect to the self and heal the codependent in you. If people knew that they were enough, they wouldn't seek outside validation. They wouldn't be holding their breath every time they met someone and hoped that person liked them. If they knew that they were enough, they would go for their dreams. If they knew that they were enough, they wouldn't settle for faulty relationships. If they knew that they were enough, they wouldn't take drugs to try to escape their realities. If they knew that they were enough, they wouldn't let people abuse them. If people really knew that they were enough, they would know that they were born to live out whatever song was on their heart. They wouldn't be afraid to sing their own song. If people really knew that they were enough, they would go for their dreams. Nothing would hold them back. Why don't we feel enough as wounded adult children? We don't feel like we're good enough because so many of us have suffered this thing called what I think is attachment trauma. When a child is born, the first thing that a child wants to do is bond with their mother or their father, but especially their mother. 
And when a child is not able to bond with their mother, a great disconnect takes place. It's called attachment trauma. It's the first thing that a child needs to do. After that umbilical cord's been cut, this child's got to bond with its mother. If that doesn't happen, then along that child's, and if it never happens, if this connection with its mother never happens, this child gets to feel disconnected from the person that's supposed to show them that they are enough. So imagine being this little baby and your mother doesn't respond to you. Or imagine being two years old and your mother pushes you away. Imagine being four years old and you're getting ignored. Imagine being five, year, five years old and you're hungry. Or you're sick and you never go to the doctor. And people ignore you. When you come from a dysfunctional home, the child's needs go ignored. And that's how you learn that you're not important enough. You're not important enough. You're not important enough for other people to care about how you feel. You know that you're enough by how your mother responds to you. The better you're nurturing, the more you, lovable you feel as a human being. The less nurtured you are, the less value you believe that you have in yourself. And that's how adult children from dysfunctional homes learn to believe that they're not good enough. Adult children from dysfunctional homes can learn to, be, learn to believe that they are enough slowly by understand that at their conception they qualified. And what I mean by that is that the moment that you're conceived, you are life incarnate and you're enough and you're divine. You had nothing to prove. An egg and a sperm came together and poof, you were created. And life began to evolve inside this two. When two cells became one cell, life began to get created inside that cell and at that moment you qualified. You had nothing to prove at that point. So if adult children of, a, of alcoholics can understand that at their core, the true essence of them is enough, and that everything else that they learn to believe about themselves is a result of dysfunctional programming, then they can remove themselves from the shame. They can understand that, oh, shame happened to me, that's not who I am, I don't have to identify with that pain anymore, because at my source I'm everything, and everything is me, I'm life. But it's a process. People who have been wounded their whole life, their brains have been designed and created and programmed to think that they're not good enough. So it's going to take time, because this is a time-space reality. It takes time for them to learn to believe that, that they are enough, but it's a process. But if we can get every adult child of an alcoholic that's been wounded to believe that at their core, they are good enough, that's the first step in the process. It doesn't happen overnight. We have to start with understanding that we were not created to turn against the self. It's not natural to turn against the self. Our natural setting, our natural, natural tendency for life is love. All human beings are born to love. So it's not natural not to love yourself. It's just not natural. You have to be taught by your experiences that you're not worthy of being loved. If you're an adult child from a dysfunctional home, love is not the vibration of your home. Dysfunction is a vibration of your home. Maybe alcoholism, maybe drug, drug abuse, maybe prostitution, maybe schizophrenia, maybe some other mental disease, maybe severe depression. But when you are born into a home that is not infused with love and it's infused with something else like a dark energy for some reason, then what happens is you disconnect from love. Children need love to be mirrored back to them. When you look into a baby's eyes, well, when a mother looks into a baby's eyes, what a baby is supposed to see is, I love you, I care about you, and you matter. And when that happens, the baby experiences a sense of me, I matter, then inside the baby's being, inside the baby's mind, mirror neurons get associated with the sense that I am enough. So when a, mother, when a child sees in mother's eyes, you are enough, you matter, then a little baby thinks, I'm enough, I matter. And then that baby can connect to love. But when that baby doesn't have that experience, when that baby's experience is disconnection from love, when that baby's ignored, when that baby's diaper has to be changed and it doesn't get changed, when that baby has no one showing up for a PTA meeting, or if that kid is the only kid that goes to school and that kid is the only mother or father who doesn't show up for that kid's PTA meeting, for instance, then this child looks around at all the other kids whose parents are, are showing up and he or she believes that there must be something wrong with me. So that is how, over time, we disconnect from love. And the only way to heal that is to begin helping adult children from dysfunctional homes expand their awareness, get them out of survival mode, 
put them into a learning mode, teach them about what went wrong. Because what happens is we're stuck in a pain versus pleasure loop. We're trying to avoid pain, those of us who have been wounded in childhood. And for us to really heal and to learn to believe that we're enough, what we have to do is shift out of survival mode and into some type of a learning mode where we're learning about what went wrong. That helps our brains get out of neutral and we start moving forward. And so it's a slow process. It's, it's not a quick fix. It takes time. It definitely takes time, but that's definitely one of the things we can do. We can start teaching them about what went wrong. And I always say, there's a problem, but you can't find the solution unless you can identify the problem. So we have to teach adult, children's, adult children from dysfunctional homes why they don't feel like they're good enough. We have to point them in the direction of what went wrong, and then that's how we develop solutions. But they can't heal that unless they first identify the problem. ideal that someone else put inside their mind. Some ideal that it's outside of themselves. Well, if I do this, then I'll be good enough. If I look like this, then I'll be good enough. If I have that job, I'll be good enough. But the real suffering has to do with the fact that most people don't understand that the baloney has to listen to what's happening inside. And that was really one of my aha moments. So if I did not heal and figure out how to heal from codependency, I think I probably would have gotten terminally ill. I think there's a very good chance that I'm afraid of the shoe dropping, but they don't know why they're so afraid all the time. And I would say, when you're codependent, you live with angst, and you're constantly trying to be good enough. There's always a sense that I'm not good enough, and like I'm, I'm running this marathon, and, and I'm trying to prove myself. There's something that I'm trying to do, even though it's dysfunctional, it hurts like hell. They'll hang on because they're afraid of being alone. But they're afraid of being alone because they're codependent to the idea that they need this person in their life to make them feel whole. And that's essential unless you have that thing. And that thing could be a barn. You know? That big thing could be a horse. That thing could be a relationship. It could be a car. It could be a job. But I think that we are codependent when we believe that there's something external out here in the material world that will bring us a certain level of relationships. We hope that, you know, if I if I make the spaghetti perfect, then I'll be good enough. Eventually this person's going to pat me on the back and the sky is going to be open and then I'm going to be good enough. So we're codependent when we think that there's something outside looking to make sure that people were not angry at me. That's a big fear. Codependents are so afraid to have people get angry at them. It's terrifying. My name is Lisa A. Romano and I am somebody who is absolutely passionate about helping people heal from codependency and attachment trauma and narcissistic abuse. You know, many years ago when my life began spinning violently out of control, the last, my last resort was to go see a psychotherapist. And while I was sitting in the psychotherapist's office and he did a family history on me, he asked me if there was any alcoholism in my family. And originally I said no. And then he asked, I said to him, he said to me, is there any alcoholism in your family? And I said no. And I said, my parents don't drink. And then he said, that's not what I asked you. I asked you if there's any alcoholism in your family. And I sat back and I thought, well, mm, yeah, both sets of my parents, my grandparents were actually alcoholics. And then he said, well, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is you're not crazy, you're just codependent. And the bad news is you're very codependent. And I thought, what the hell does that mean? At the time, I had a very limited understanding about codependency. I thought, if you were codependent, that had to mean that you were married to an alcoholic or a drug addict, and I wasn't. I didn't drink, and my ex-husband didn't drink. So I was confused. But my life was so, so crazy at the time. I was suffering from depression and panic disorder, migraine headaches, asthma, rashes, you name it, that I had nothing else to cling to. And so I went to the store and I grabbed a whole bunch of books and I read about codependency and sure enough, I had to agree I was codependent. But what I found missing on all these bookstores was there was no book that helped me figure out how to heal from codependency. And way back when, 
I discovered I was codependent, I decided that if I ever healed, that I would create a book and possibly even a program that would help people heal from codependency. And so that's what I've been doing with my life for the past, I don't know how many years, 10, 15, 20 years, researching and developing ways to help people heal from codependency.